Hello, Parksburg Baptist Church. Happy, Happy, Happy New, New Year. Year. Mm -hmm. Good morning. Thank you for having us and allowing Brian to be a guest speaker this morning. Um, just to update you on the Smith family, we have been in La Ramona, Dominican Republic for about two months now. We are getting our house settled. We are starting to learn language. We're starting to acclimate to another culture. And we are so very, very thankful for your continued support and your prayers and encouragement um, as we've been on this journey um, with God's purpose. Would you please join me with, for a word of prayer? Dear Lord, thank you for this beautiful morning. We thank you for another new year, another day and another year of 365 waking days of promises to glorify you. And Lord, we are grateful for your promises. We are grateful for your faithfulness, for your provision. And Lord, while this past year has had its share of troubles and there will inevitably be hard times in the years to come, Lord, we know that you are faithful, you are who you say you are, and you continue to provide. Lord, while we go through these hard times and ups and downs, may we be mindful of those promises. May we be mindful of the love and the grace and the mercy that you've shown each one of us by sending your son as a baby in the most humble ways possible to show us how we ought to live. And Lord, you sent him out of love for each of us. And you knew what he would sacrifice on that cross to allow each of us to accept the gift to be with you for eternity. Lord, as we step into this new year, as we open a new chapter, allow us to look for you. Look for those times that you are being faithful, that you are upholding your promises. Lord, the times that you are embracing us and giving us your unconditional love. And may we remember to extend the love and the grace and the mercy and forgiveness that you have extended to each of us. Lord, may we look for the good. Despite the challenge, may we look for the good that comes out of each of these situations. Lord, we thank you for each of the members of Parksburg Baptist Church. We thank you for Pastor Mary. We are thankful that she is able to have a little bit of a break. And Lord, we know that um, there are inevitably um, people that aren't able to tune in today, but we know that they are there in spirit. And Lord, we just ask blessing on each of you or each person that hears the word today. May you be glorified. May the fellowship that we're able to have, even though it looks different than maybe we're used to, May we still remember that it's important to connect and to fellowship, um, just to remember to be encouraged by one another in our walk with you. Mm -hmm. Lord, just as Brian shares this morning, may your word settle in our hearts. May it reveal um, things that we need to hear, things that we need to consider, and things that we need to apply to our own lives. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord, for who you are. Thank you again for who you are, and just your mighty, mighty majesty. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. When Pastor Mary asked me to speak uh, this morning to you all, I had um, just read a devotional with Cowan uh, before he went to bed, and I really felt like it could be the basis for a, a sermon uh, around New Year. And so I had uh, been working on some research for it, and and expanding and taking notes on it but it, it just wasn't coming together for me and um, I came across another passage in my devotions that uh, really struck me and really kind of hit me um, down to my core and as I was uh, seeing what's happening in the environment politically and uh, with COVID uh, this passage uh, just really um, put things uh, kind of into perspective uh, for me. And, and so it, it kind of uh, 
took away all those notes that I had done and all the research I was working on, and this passage took over. And so this morning, I want to share with you um, a message from Isaiah 66, uh, verses 1 and 2. Um, and anybody that's ever done uh, sermon prep, I know there's a few of you watching that uh, have done sermon prep that uh, a lot of times you learn more from the passage uh, preparing for it uh, than what you expected. And this was the case for me today. Uh, Isaiah 66, uh, verses 1 and 2, and I'm reading from the ESV this morning. Thus says the Lord, heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. What is the house that you would build for me? And what is the place of my rest? All these things my hand has made, and so all of these things came to be, declares the Lord. But this is the one to whom I will look, he who is humble and contrite in spirit and trembles at my word. My sermon title this morning is God is Humble and God of the Lowly. Since embarking on the missionary journey and at different points in my spiritual walk, None of the Old Testament books of prophecy has pulled me in like the book of Isaiah. As we are new missionaries exploring new lands, I can see so much of Isaiah's writings that help me on a daily or even weekly, or at least a weekly basis. To give you a little context for this passage of Isaiah 66, after the Judeans returned to Jerusalem in about 539 BC, they wanted to build, uh, rebuild the Temple of Solomon that had been destroyed nearly 50 years before. But in this passage, God said to them, Where is this house that you would build for me? I created all things. God is referencing here uh, Genesis 1-1 and then also Psalm 24-1, uh, where everything uh, belongs to God. Uh, he's referencing that he, God, does not live in houses, um, and it's, it's, he doesn't live anywhere that is created by humans. And according to Haggai 2 verse 8, the silver and gold that were to be used for building such a temple, those things already belonged to God. Uh, in fact, this helps us to contextualize how really small and, and um, how, how minute we are. When uh, heaven is God's throne and the earth is just his footstool uh, that we put to the side of the room when we're not using it. Uh, the returned Judeans did eventually build this te second temple for the Lord. But God wanted them to understand that I, God, am more interested in who are poor and the one who has a contrite spirit and who trembles at God's word. That means what God wants is humility, not this big temple or this big magnificent building. God prefers the humble heart to sacrifices or relig religious rituals. In verse 2 of Isaiah 66, the words humble and contrite are used to describe not just people who are poor, uh, but also includes people who are afflicted. In many cultures, including those we have recently lived in Haiti and also the Dominican Republic, the poor are, those, are also those who are afflicted or have untreated or undiagnosed mental or physical illnesses. Contrite in this verse is also referring to the lame or the disabled. It's important to this verse because it's telling us that even those the one who is aware of the damage by sin or the personal inability to stand before God, this is reinforcing what Isaiah has already said in, uh, back in chapter 57, verse 15, uh, which states, For thus says the one who is high and lifted up, who inhabits eternity, whose name is holy. I will dwell in the high and holy place, and also with him who is of the contrite and lowly spirit, to revive the spirit of the lowly and to revive the heart of the contrite. I want to discuss three lessons that we can learn from here today. The first lesson I have for you today is 
Our God is a humble God. When we think about the attributes of God, what do we think of? God is holy. God is faithful. God is a righteous God. Is God is just, sovereign, all-powerful, omniscient, and so on. We have lots of attributes that we can describe God. I don't typically hear people say, God is humble. And yet, here we are learning that humility is an integral part to the composition of God. Yes, God is a supreme God in his position of all authority. He is superior in every way, but he doesn't boast of his power. The opposite of humility is pride. In many, many places, in Psalms and all throughout Proverbs, uh, we are shown that the proud are those that oppose God. In verse 2 of Isaiah 66, the words humble and contrite are used to describe not just people who are poor, uh, but also includes people who are afflicted. In many cultures, including those we have recently lived in Haiti and also the Dominican Republic, the poor are, those, are also those who are afflicted or have untreated or undiagnosed mental or physical illnesses. Contrite in this verse is also referring to the lame or the disabled. It's important to this verse because it's telling us that even those, the one who is aware of the damage by sin or the personal inability to stand before God, this is reinforcing what Isaiah has already said in, uh, back in chapter 57, verse 15, uh, which states, For thus says the one who is high and lifted up, who inhabits eternity, whose name is holy. I will dwell in the high and holy place, and also with him who is of the contrite and lowly spirit, to revive the spirit of the lowly and to revive the heart of the contrite. I want to discuss three lessons that we can learn from here today. The first lesson I have for you today is our God is a humble God. When we think about the attributes of God, what do we think of? God is holy. God is faithful. God is a righteous God. Is God is just, sovereign, all-powerful, omniscient, and so on. We have lots of attributes that we can describe God. I don't typically hear people say, God is humble. The third lesson I have for you is that Jesus is our best example of humility. He is an excellent role model for us to learn from. Ephesians 5 verse 1 tells us to follow God's example. I want to give you just a couple of the many examples from Jesus' life that show humility. Jesus was born in a manger. The significance of this is huge. This manger is a borrowed place. It wasn't even a place that Mary and Joseph owned. This action in the Christmas story is so significant because this makes Jesus relatable to every person. What if Jesus was born in a fancy hotel in the jacuzzi suite? Would he have the same approachability to everyone? The next example I want to share is the Sunday before Easter, we celebrate Palm Sunday. The story of Jesus entering Jerusalem on a colt, the fowl of a donkey. According to Matthew, the significance of this event was equally as huge. It was to fulfill prophecy, and yet at the same time of fulfilling prophecy, the whole city was, was aware of what was happening. The people of the city thought their dream of a political messiah to free them from the bondage they were living to deliver the people of Rome, had just arrived. They didn't know the extent of the deliverance that would come, that through his death and that... 
They didn't know the extent of the deliverance that this gift would come. They didn't know the extent of this deliverance that would come through, the, through his death and that the gift would be eternal life. So why did Jesus choose to enter the world So why did the Savior of the world enter Jerusalem on a donkey and not a shiny chariot? Humility. Will you be humble in the sight of both God and humans? Will you today commit to be the donkey that will carry Jesus to the world? We are all valuable when we carry Jesus with us. John 8, 32 tells us that it is his truth that has set us free. At the ending of this message, it should be easy to see that God is humble and that he's always on the side of the lowly people. Jesus loves those who are humble because they see their need for God. As we go into the sugarcane battes, as we travel to impoverished areas of the Dominican Republic and also into Haiti, we see a dependence every day on God because they don't have anything else. They have to depend for, for God to deliver them every single day. There's a need and it encourages my spirit to just be around them. Proverbs 22.4 says, The reward for humility and fear of the Lord is riches and honor in life. If Jesus didn't practice humility, living it out, then you and I would still be lost in our sin. If we want to debate politics, or mask versus no mask, if we want to talk about whether we meet in church or if we can meet virtually and still have the impact, if we want to talk, begin conversations of a post-COVID-19 world as we enter into this new year of 2021, first, we must start to tremble at the word of God. I want to say that again. First, we must start to tremble at the word of God. As you all are a supporting church of our work to the island of Hispaniola, Haiti and the Dominican Republic, we, our family, are challenged on a daily basis with new experiences. And I want to say many failures and just a few successes have come. But through the period of us transitioning to Haiti and then through my sickness uh, over a year back to the United States and now uh, for two months back to the Dominican Republic and then for the whole period of deputation and preparing to come to the mission field for the first time, I wanna tell you that I quickly learned that it isn't me doing the work. It is through throwing off my pride and clinging to the humility that is the journey we are on as followers of Jesus Christ, each of us. It is the process of sanctification for as long as we shall live. Humility is knowing our place. It is in the universe that God created. We live here on earth. We live in a place that is merely the footstool for God. Humility is knowing that Jesus is the source of all that there is, all that we have, all that we are, even the breath we take. We would be nothing apart from God. Humility, that's a gift from God. 
Thank you so much for welcoming us into your church again. It's been a couple of years since we visited, uh, but we're really happy uh, to be visiting you from the Dominican Republic. And so I want to say Merry Christmas, Feliz Navidad, Joy Noel, and a Happy New Year. Feliz Ano Nuevo, Bon Ane. Bon Je Ben You, Deus Te Bendiga, God bless you. I just want to close us with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your glory. We thank you for this new year of 2021. We thank you that we have the ability to dream. We thank you for the opportunity that we can humble ourselves before your throne and throw off anything that's hindering us from growing closer to you so that we can run the race with perseverance that's set before us. Lord God, I thank you for each person that's hearing this message, and I pray that it's touched their heart as much as it's touched mine. Lord God, I, I pray that we can remain humble, that we can reach those who are in the lowly, that we can carry you on our shoulders as we go into the places that you have called us each to go into. Lord God, I pray for each person that has family that's afflicted by COVID right now, that has other health problems, those that are worried about going to get medical treatments, those that are currently uh, facing ailments or cancer. Uh, we just pray that you surround each of these people with your love, with your grace, with your mercy. As we go through the holidays, we pray for those that are struggling with depression, who are missing loved ones who have gone on to be with you, who have, uh, are no longer with us. And so we just pray that in this season that you can lift the shroud of darkness over those that are struggling right now, and that your light can shine into their soul and that they can reflect and look up to you and that you will have mercy on each of us as we have all fallen and we have all sinned, that we all struggle with our own pride. Lord God, I pray as we go about our weeks, as we go about the days ahead of us, that we will look for you. We will look for ways to exalt your name, to put you on high. Even as we witness to those in our household, for those of us that have to school our kids at home, that we can show them the grace and the mercy that we're not teachers, but we're trying our best. Lord God, uh, we thank you so much for the opportunity to share our lives with the lives of those that are in Pennsylvania right now. In your name I pray, amen. Thanks again for the opportunity to be here. Uh, we love you guys and we thank you so much for your prayers and your support of us. Bye.